Hey guys, it's Michelle here. Uh, I just thought I would turn the camera on and tell a couple of funny stories because they're like really, they were just coming up. I'm not camera ready. Sorry, this is not, you know, I try, I'm not very put together. And this is not the eyeshadow that I would wear to, you know, be on camera. But whatever, we're just going to get through this. So I thought it'd be really funny to do a video on some stories where I made a complete ass out of myself in front of celebrities. So the first story involves my boss, uh, my old boss. He, uh, his name is Peter and he's a CEO. He comes in after an event and I think it was, I forget, I think it was the night before or something like that. So he comes in, he's talking to me and the first assistant and he says, you know what, ladies, I met the most wonderful young man last night, brilliant young man. And I think this is a name that you need to remember. His name is Elon Musk. And he stared at us. And I'm kind of looking at the first assistant. I should put in here that I didn't want this job. And I was very, very not interested in learning CEOs' names. I didn't care. I mean, unless it's my boyfriend or, you know, you're talking about, like, if, if it's finances, if you're talking about my money, then I care. But at that time, I was like, whatever. I'm not going to be here much longer. <laughs> so um, I didn't, <laughs> when he's telling us his name, I didn't know who that was. And I, he seemed like he was very expectant of some sort of reaction out of us and I didn't know what to do for him, okay? And he just kept staring at us. He says, yes, he has some very innovative ideas. I really think that he is going to go far in this world. He's really gonna change this world. I highly recommend that you remember this name. And he starts staring at us again. And so I felt pressure to <laughs> repeat back what he just said. I was like, oh, yes, his name is Alan Must. Okay, I didn't, I never met Elon Musk, um, <laughs> Elon Musk, never met him. The part of me making a fool out of myself with celebrities is like right now during this video, uh, admitting that I didn't know who he was or what his name was. Sorry, not that he cares, but sorry. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I, I say about, you know, what's his name? Alan Musk? No, 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 no. Elon Musk, like the perfume. And... <laughs> Get, oh, wow. Okay. And he just stared us down again. And I felt like, you know when a professor stares at you and they're like, this is going to be on the quiz. So I'm like, okay, if this is so awkward. I don't know what you want from me, but I'm just going to grab a pen. And so somewhere in a notebook, I probably still have, I wrote down Elon Musk <laughs> or Elon Musk. I mean, the media pronounces it Elon, right? Anyway, it's stuck in my head and it is Elon Musk. So there's that one. The second story may prove to haunt me because it's really stupid, really stupid, <laughs> really stupid. So my, the, this person that my coworker, this person that I worked with, she had this ability to memorize everybody's phone numbers. So when the phone rang, she saw this number and she said, that's Steve Jobs. And she's wah, 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 wah. And then Peter is in his office going, that's Steve. Is someone getting like, so everyone's talking at me. I was like, okay, I can't even think a second. You know, shush, you know? So I pick up the phone, you know, Good afternoon, Peter Blah's office. This is Michelle Patterson speaking. How may I help you? And I hear, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't laughing. As a matter of fact, my mind started going to, what kind of fool assistant does this guy have? You know, like if he's so big and powerful, why doesn't he have a decent assistant? This assistant should not be answering the phone with their mouth full of food or whatever. And so I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, what was that? I couldn't understand you. And he's like, oh, um, sorry, this is Steve Jobs for Peter, if he's available. When I heard the voice, uh, and I'll explain this here in a second, I was like, oh no, this is Steve himself. Holy cow. I'm, I'm so sorry. Yes, Peter is available. I'll get you over there right now. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. And he's really nice about it, really cool about it. Pass it off to Peter and Peter comes to the door because CEOs have this weird little boy thing where it's like, who can keep who waiting on the phone longer? So usually it's the assistant calling the assistant and then there's this competition about who gets on the phone first. It's really stupid. I'm saying it to every CEO out there. It is stupid, okay? But whatever. <laughs> so anyway, so they get on the phone and the first assistant is yelling at me and she's like, what were you saying to him? And I looked at her and I said, who is Steve Jobs again? Yeah. I, okay. In my defense, 
it's not a real defense, but my attempt at a defense, it was 2007, the iPhone was just coming out. Uh, Bill Gates was more of a household name in my world <laughs> than, than Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs would have been really well known by artists and designers. He was, you know, as soon as she said it, the CEO of Apple, I was like, oh, the guy with the turtleneck and the glasses and the bad jeans, him? Struts around on the stage with the little thing and like whips things out and iPods. Oh, I know who he is. I got one in my purse. Okay, okay, I'm with you now. But <laughs> up until that point, Steve Jobs was, you know, really associated with bringing out the, uh, I don't know what they were called, but the colorful um, iMacs and the the notebooks. You guys remember one was like called Tangerine. I think one was Blueberry. I miss those. Apple, you need to bring those back. Those were awesome. But you know, Apple had not been doing well right at the turn of the century, and he was kind of the guy that was bringing it back. You know, so there was some of that going on. But definitely, he was not. At least in my mind, and who am I? But at least in my mind, he wasn't somebody that you say Steve Jobs and you immediately like, oh, uh, Apple, you know? So that happened. <laughs> the third story has to do with an event we were holding and I had to go and help, you know, at the, at the front of the event, pass out name tags. Okay, so the first assistant, after the Steve Jobs debacle and not knowing who he was, uh, <laughs> uh, says to me, now there are gonna be a lot of like high level people here, you know, and, like basically be on your best behavior. Not that I didn't behave, but like, you know, be on, a, on high alert. So I see this gentleman walk up and there was another woman who, it was like a, it was a pretty big event. So we had, um, if I remember correctly, assistants coming from overseas, you know, it's an international company. So we had people there helping. Someone was helping with the name tags. They walk away. They asked me to fill in. So I come on up and she's kind of going off and there's people all over the place. And I see a gentleman, he's got his face down. He's looking at the table. So I come shoulder to shoulder with him. And again, it's very, very crowded. So we're kind of crunched in together. And I was like, oh, um, can I help you find your name tag? Yeah, I, I don't know where it is. Uh, I'm like, oh, okay, what's the name? Every face that was standing around this man snapped my way and looked at me as if they were about to call me an ambulance. And he looked a little like uh, Clive Davis. And he's looking around the table. I can't see his face really. And, I mean, and not that I would really know what Clive Davis looks like. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not that kind of person who grabs up magazines about people, you know stuff like that, but I definitely knew the name and I knew who he was and I was flipping out. Uh, my heart started pounding so hard in my chest and I'm like, everyone's gonna kill me because I don't know anybody, you know? <laughs> so I look around and finally, I, it, there was, I think there was a woman standing next to him. She found his name tag first and snatched it off the table and just glared at me and she's like, here you go, Clive, here it is. And I was like, oh God, and I was like, um, sorry about that. And he looked at me and he was like, oh, that's fine. That's fine. You know, and just walked on. And he didn't seem bothered. He seemed like he was more focused on other things than, you know, somebody not recognizing him. So yeah, needless to say, after that event, the, the first assistant, when I looked up at her, she was just looking at me like, like, I'm going to kill you. Like, you know, like, and she actually pulled me aside and she says, okay, you need to get to know who the CEOs are and who the important people are, especially at these kinds of events. You know, when you pick up the phone, you gotta memorize their phone. You gotta be better at this. And I'm like, yeah, in my head I'm thinking, but I don't want to do this job. So, uh, you know, why am I putting that brain power into figuring out who these high powered people are when, you know, I'm not gonna be around much longer. So anyway, regardless, it was really embarrassing. And as a grown adult looking, I was grown back then, I was, you know, 30 old enough, <laughs> but it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> to look back on that time and just be like, man, why didn't I take the job more seriously? Because I did end up being there for six years. But I think next up, next up, I am going to be recording a memory from my time in Los Angeles when I hit Rick Schroeder with my car. That's up next. <laughs> Catch me there. <laughs> Bye.